the Empire State Building. One of the landmarks of New York, it has often been regarded as the eighth wonder of the world. 381 meters high, for nearly half a century, it was the tallest structure on Earth. With 102 floors, it towers over the skyline of Manhattan. Every day, up to 60,000 people enter and leave this building at 350 Fifth Avenue. That's the population of a medium-sized town. Erected in a record 18 months, the Empire State Building was opened on May the 1st, 1931. One of the most famous skyscrapers in the world, it has since become a legend. In 1871, large parts of Chicago were destroyed in a great fire. Whole areas had to be rebuilt. The reconstruction work marked the start of an architectural revolution. The skyscraper was born. With building land in short supply, the new method of construction also proved popular in New York. Soon the two cities were locked in a unique contest that was all about prestige, a race to construct the world's tallest building. John Jacob Raskop, the founder of General Motors, desperately wanted to emerge victorious. In order to turn his version into reality, he sold his shares in GM for $20 million. Raskop had a dream for New York. Times were good. The American economy was experiencing a tremendous boom. And Fifth Avenue was becoming what it still is today, the top address in Manhattan. Luxury stores opened up in the heart of the city. In the late 1920s, the famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel was a symbol of wealth, splendor, and social standing that attracted the New York upper class like a magnet. But Raskop was only interested in the site itself. He bought the hotel for $16 million, and on August the 29th, 1929, the New York Times reported that the Waldorf Astoria was about to be demolished. Raskop had no time for sentimentality. In Who's Who, he described himself as a professional capitalist. But only two months later, Raskop and the whole of America suffered a stunning blow. On Black Friday, the New York Stock Exchange experienced the greatest collapse in history. In just six days, investors lost $50 billion. Raskop's financing plans were looking desperate, but he was in luck. The Metropolitan Life Insurance Company granted him a substantial loan. However, the interest repayments left Raskob little leeway. The project had to be completed as swiftly as possible. The construction schedule could scarcely have been tighter. The Empire State Building had to be erected in only 18 months. A race against time began. A monumental construction project called for exceptional architects. The choice fell on Shreve, Lamb and Harmon Associates. In one meeting with William Lamb, Raskop asked the architect how high he could build without the skyscraper toppling over. In the end, the building reached a height of 381 meters. Only a stone's throw away, the Chrysler Building was also intended to become the world's tallest structure. Its planned height was kept a secret, so Raskop had to make doubly sure. He ordered the addition of five more floors, plus a 60-meter-high docking facility for airships. Thus, the Empire State Building literally put its neighbor in the shade. Geologically, Manhattan is an ideal location for skyscrapers because the bedrock is regarded as earthquake-proof. Only a few weak tremors are experienced every now and then. 
In 1930, for countless immigrants, America was the land of opportunity. The Empire State Building was intended to show just what America was capable of. However, this prestigious project faced restrictive building laws. For instance, Raskop could only use about half the land he had bought. And regulations in force at the time generally required skyscrapers to taper towards the top. The Starrett Brothers and Ecom Company applied for the construction contract and submitted convincing innovative concepts. A specially built railway line ensured just-in-time supplies. This avoided unnecessary obstruction through building material being stacked up in the streets. The equipment wasn't hired as was customary, but purchased and resold when the project was finished. Because the equipment was new, teams were able to work faster and more efficiently. Up to 3,000 people were involved in the mammoth project. The Empire State Building site was often a far from inviting workplace. Most of the construction workers were Native Americans who had no fear of heights and who could balance on the steel girders high above the roofs of New York. In all, the project claimed 14 lives. Ruskop chose the marble for the building very carefully. For the facade, he ordered over 30,000 square meters of high-quality marble from Italy and France. The quarries on the other side of the Atlantic undertook to supply material that had been cut exactly to size and polished. He planned the production of steel for the building with the same care. Works in Pittsburgh were given detailed structural plans that specified how many rivets would be needed. Orders for more than 60,000 tons of steel were placed. Each girder was given an index number, which indicated the delivery date and where it was to be installed. Only 80 hours after being cast, the sections for the steel skeleton had reached their destination on Fifth Avenue. Even when judged by modern standards, the logistics and coordination verge on the miraculous. The Statue of Liberty was a prominent forerunner of steel skeleton construction. In 1886, Gustav Eiffel made an important technology transfer with his gift to the United States. The principle is still standard in skyscraper construction even today. But Eiffel created the perfect example of a steel construction for his French homeland. And he took just 26 months. Built for the World Exhibition in 1889, for a long time the Eiffel Tower was the tallest structure in the world. Using his experience of building bridges, Eiffel constructed the tower with maximum wind permeability. The structure consists of 15,000 steel parts. Considering the structural volume, the Eiffel Tower is extremely light. It weighs only 7,500 tons. Its four legs rest on a massive concrete base, so the weight pressing on the ground is only about four and a half kilograms per square centimeter. That's about the same pressure a chair leg exerts when supporting a person of average weight. Steel skeleton structures have other advantages. Where conventional buildings are concerned, it can be said that the higher they are, the more stable their walls are. But for an architectural giant like the Empire State Building, the supporting walls would have to be so thick that there would be no room for such a spacious reception hall. A steel skeleton, however, transfers the weight not to the walls, but to the foundations. The facade is merely attached to the skeleton like a curtain. the advantages are obvious. With their relatively low weight, such constructions guarantee extremely high stability, and they can be erected very quickly. Most of the parts are prefabricated to size by the steelworks and are simply riveted together on site. The weight of the Empire State Building is borne by a total of 210 pillars, a seemingly unshakable steel bulwark. That, at least, is what the architects thought in 1930 
they could never have foreseen the madness of September the 11th, 2001. It was burning kerosene that caused the steel girders of the World Trade Center to melt. Experts cannot agree whether the buildings would have collapsed had the fuel tanks of the aircraft that struck them been empty. It's possible that the steel skeleton could have withstood the mere impact. Despite their size, steel structural components have a tolerance of less than half a millimeter. This precision also enables intermediate elements to be prefabricated and installed in the shell construction later. With the Empire State Building, this was all done in the form of piecework. 20,000 square meters of glass for the 6,500 windows had to be cut to size. An army of bricklayers was hired to line the internal walls with 10 million bricks. Gradually, the skeleton was filled with life. The 15,000 telephones and more than 5,000 kilometers of cable needed for the building pushed the Bell Telephone Company to its limits. Incredible quantities of doorknobs, taps, locks and radiators had to be fitted. The construction costs totaled $41 million nine million less than Raskop had calculated. The Empire State Building was completed four and a half months earlier than planned. As a rule, people are not prepared to walk up more than five floors. And so the development of the lift was of decisive importance to skyscraper construction. The steam-powered lift was invented in 1852 by Elisha Graves Otis. Five years later, it was being used in New York for transporting passengers. A quarter of a century later, Otis's sons, Charles and Norton, presented the first hydraulic lift. Not only was it safer than its predecessors, it was cheaper to operate. The hydraulic system utilized the pressure from the pipes of the municipal waterworks. In 1903, the first electric lift entered operation in the Beaver Building in New York. Electric lifts could reach any height required and were much faster. One veteran from this era is still in service in the Woolworth Building and gives visitors a slow but nostalgic ride. Anyone heading for the top floor has to be patient. But with a speed of 12.7 kilometers per hour, Back then, the Woolworth lift was a real racer. The size of the Empire State Building called for an effective logistics system for lifts. And it too has stood the test of time. Some lifts only serve certain floors. This avoids long waiting times. 11 kilometers of lift shafts and 67 lifts ensure that people reach their destination as swiftly as possible. At 22 kilometers an hour, the lifts are almost as fast as their counterparts in what is currently the world's tallest building. It stands in Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. The Patronas Towers soar up above the mega city to a height of 450 meters. But giant buildings over 500 meters high are already being planned. Just where will this race end? Will we one day see buildings with more people in them than a large town? John Jacob Raskop was a man of vision. He built for eternity, but in reaching for the stars, he started a race in which he himself long since became history.